Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio and today I'm going to show with you how to create some real estate land boundaries graphics in DaVinci Resolve. So let's check it out. Alright, so in DaVinci Resolve we're now on the edit page and first off you're going to need obviously a piece of footage. So in that case that will be a drone footage that is just moving forward and I'm just going to draw here the boundary of that land that is for sale. So we're going to start by here bringing the clip that we want to, to use. Make sure to trim the excess and then we can just right click and select new fusion clip so we can continue to work in fusion. Let's move over to the fusion page. Now we have our media in, which is our clip and the media out. The first thing I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna bring a new background and I'm gonna link the output of that background to the media in, which merge that background. Here we have a black frame. We're gonna change that in a minute by here selecting the background one and it shifts based on our keyboard and we're gonna use the mask paint. So let's search for mask paint and here we're just gonna bring the mask paint node and the black frame disappear. Here we're gonna switch from brush to polyline stroke. And now we're gonna be able to draw all frames. So here I'm gonna start by adding one point here, then I'm gonna move forward and add another point here, then a third one here, and a fourth one here. And then I'm gonna close that loop by coming back to my first point. If you're unhappy with the placement of your point, you can just select the point that you're unhappy with and just move it around. And here you can just adjust that position. Also, if your land is not square, then you want to be flush here, for example, with those rounded edges, you can select all your point and then you can hit Shift S on your keyboard. And here now you will have rounded edges instead of square. And you can just adjust those with those handle and really get the shape that you want. Right now we're just going to use this square frame. I'm going to first change the color here of the background from black to white. And then here we're going to go to the mask paint and we're going to adjust the soft edges because here as you can see the edges are very soft and it looks blurry. We're going to just change that here by adjusting the softness and we're going to reduce the softness by a lot. And then you can just adjust the size. So here we're going to use very thin line because I think it looks cleaner in general. And already here we got all frame. Now I'm going to add a circle on each corner and we're going to fill that rectangle with a white with a slightly lower opacity. And so we can see a clear difference between outside of the frame and inside of the frame. To do that, let's start here by selecting the mask paint. And here we can just select the fill tool and we can just click in the middle of our frame. Here, as you can see, if we go to the modifier, it has created a new fill. So here we have our polyline stroke, which is the outline that we created at the beginning. And now we have that fill. We're gonna just drop the opacity lower. Let's go with 0.25. Now that we have our frame, let's just track it so it moves accordingly with the movement of the drone. So here I'm just going to select my mask paint, select all my point, and here we're just going to move to the publish menu and we're going to publish to tracker. Now our frame disappeared, but here we have that tracker node that just pop up and we're just going to bring that in between the media in and the merge. So I'm going to select it and here hold shift on my keyboard and just drag that here onto that line. Make sure it's connected here through the yellow arrow and the output to go to the merge tool. Now, right now we're at the end of our clip, so we're just gonna track reverse. And as you can see, it has been tracked and it looks like it has done a very good job. Here, everything looks in place. Sometimes you might want to make some adjustment to the adaptive mode here doing uh, every frame or best match. And even in some cases, just doing it manually will do the job better than the tracker in my opinion. Now let's just finish the graphic by adding those circles in the corner. I'm going to bring here a new background in my working area, link the output of that background to my merge tool, and then still with the background tool selected, I'm going to select here the ellipse node, which bring that circle shape. And now I'm just going to right click on the width, select expression, and I'm going to link the width and the height together so they retain the same values. So that's going to allow us to keep the same ratio for the circle. This will allow us to keep a perfect circle. Now I can just easily bring the size down. And I'm going to change the color here to white. Now we have four corners, so we're going to need to create three of those circles. To do that, I'm going to use instances. So I'm going to select here my mask and my background, copy them, and here right click, paste instance. And we're going to repeat that three times. And now we can link the output of each instance back to the main composition. And now we're going to link them to each corner. So I'm going to go back to my mask paint. And here we're going to go to modifier, select your polyline stroke, and then you can just go back to tool. So now the polyline stroke is loaded into tool. And we have access to the data of each corner here of the frame. I'm going to pin that so it's say in the inspector and I'm going to go to the ellipse and here for the ellipse I'm going to right click on center expression and we're going to link the center of the circle to here the first point so point zero. 
So now I snap this circle into place and they share the same center. Now we're gonna repeat that for each circle. So I'm gonna select my second circle right here. Right click on center. Here we need to de-instance it. And instead of having polyline stroke 1.0, here we're gonna link it to the point one. So I'm just gonna delete that zero and add one. But we could just as well, you know, delete it and here link it the same way we've done it for the first one. It will work the exact same way. And here, as you can see, it's just snap into place. Now, same thing for the third one. We're gonna de-instance the center and then we're just gonna change here from zero to point two. And same for the fourth one, de-instance and Point three. Now, in case you're not familiar with the instances, I will link to another video in the description below. But here is a quick reason why using instances instead of having just three individual circle is that now I can just go back to my first ellipse, the original one, and we can just reduce the size and it will affect all the circles. So here we can just reduce that and number two, three and four will be adjusted as well because they are derivative from the original one. And now if we play it, we got all frame fully tracked. Now, what if we want to make a quick animation? Let's do that right now. I'm gonna go to frame 20. Here, I select my mask paint. I'm gonna open the stroke control menu and here I'm gonna drop a keyframe on right on. Then I'm gonna go down to frame zero and I'm gonna bring the right on down to zero. Now don't worry that white field opacity just spread on the entire frame. We're just gonna adjust that in a second. Here, we're gonna go to frame 30, go to the modifier, go to the fill, and here we're just gonna drop a keyframe on the opacity. We're gonna make that feel flicker, so I'm gonna go here to frame 20 and we're gonna drop the opacity down to zero. Now we're gonna go three frames forward, so here at frame 24. We're gonna put the opacity back fully at 0.25 and then move three frames forward again and drop the opacity down to zero again. And that's just gonna create that flicker animation. Now the last one, let's animate the circle. So here I'm gonna go to frame 20. I'm gonna go to the first ellipse and I'm gonna drop a keyframe on the height. And now I can just go to frame zero and bring the height down to zero. And now let's play it. Perfect, we got our final result. Please let me know in the comment what kind of video you would like to see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.